Greetings friend, Timberlake here. At the 2009 National Sudoku Championship in Philadelphia, U.S. and World Sudoku Champion Thomas Snyder was vying for the $10,000 first prize and a place on the U.S. team for the 2010 World Sudoku Championship. However, he made a blunder on this classic Sudoku puzzle in the last round and was disqualified. His competitors that day were Tammy McLeod and Eugene Varshavsky. I'll put the link to the original video below that shows Snyder solving this puzzle. So, let's find out where Snyder went wrong. So he starts out by solving several nines in this puzzle. So he looks up in row one, column three, and sees that this can be a nine because of the nines right here in rows two and three. And then he cuts over to row seven, column one, and solves another nine there. You can see the nine and the nine, makes sure there's a nine right here. And then cuts over row nine, column five, because so you can see two nines coming down, columns four and six, and then you have seven and eight. Uh, and then he starts and he finds some threes that he can solve. So the first three he sees is in row nine, column three. So what you'll notice is there's a three right here and a three right here, and there's only one place left for a three in block seven right there, row nine. Okay, and then he uses that to look across with these two threes, and he's able to solve in row seven, column nine. Not as a nine, but as a three. Sorry about that. Okay, and then you look up three here, three here, uh, and you see a three across row two, so he's able to solve this three right there. Uh, at this point, He did one more solve with the threes right here, because you can see the threes in column four and six. Solve three right there. And then he noticed uh, that he was able to solve um, a five. So he saw five, five across columns one and three. There's only one place left for a five here in block four. There it is. And it's at this point with eight cells solved, about 45 seconds into it, uh, Snyder started using his trademark, Snyder Notation. In case you're not familiar, Snyder Notation is a technique where you mark within blocks where a particular candidate can only be in two possible cells within that block. So then he looked and he started with the fives and he marked fives in block six along row four. So he marked a five here and a five there because uh, he saw these two fives. So boop, 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 with a five. Um, and he was able to solve a three at this point looking in row five. Uh, column one. So I guess he went and he looked back and saw, oh, must be a three right there. And then he looked uh, and saw that the, this four came up, column three, and then it limited the fours to tease these two spots. So then he saw that, that these were fours, so he marked those as fours, and he marked these as fours. So kind of a and then block nine, row nine. Uh, so you, you kind of follow the fours down this way. It's all four, four, and you mark these two fours. Okay, and then you start looking for sevens. Uh, so in block eight, he knows there's a seven coming down column six, a seven going across row seven. So there's only two spots left for seven. So you'll notice most of the time the scenario notation, it's gonna be like a lock can, it will be you know in a row and a block. But, but even here where it's, two different you know, rows, columns, but all in the same block, you'll still make the marking. Because the idea, what makes this so fast, is if you eliminate one of these seven, so like if you put a seven in, in here, then he can mark that as a seven right away. Uh, that's the beauty of Snyder rotation. At this point, uh, after he marked the sevens, then he was able to solve a nine in row five, uh, column nine. So you can see nine, 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 nine. And then he noticed, oh, there's only one place left for a nine. It's right there. Um, and then he started looking for eights. And so he knows that this eight came down and there's only two spots left for an eight in block seven. So it's right here. And what you also notice that this is now a pointing pair of eights, uh, which is going to be helpful because this pointing pair of eights, uh, he was able to come across right here and notice that without these being eights, um, that this was a 1-5 naked pair. So he, was, he kind of saw, hey, maybe 1-2, uh, 
uh, five, maybe seven and eight, and you saw that the two and the seven, one, five, eight, you saw that these eights took that place. And so he, he marked this down as a one, five naked pair. So a really good find right here to find that naked pair. Um, then he marked up uh, for five. So he says, okay, five's coming across here. There's a five down here. And then we've got a five here in column six. So there's only two places left for five in block eight. So he, might, he marked those fives. And then what Thomas noticed, and this is a pretty good one. I think he saw this three, nine, seven, two, along with the five and the six. And so you have basically a one, four, and eight that can be in these two spots. Well, he noticed that the four couldn't be here and the four couldn't be here. So that means it just had to be a one or an eight, right? The fours were already marked. And so he was able to mark this as another naked pair of one and eight. And that's huge because now with this one, eight naked pair, he's able to come across the ones this way and the one up here and he, he solved this cell for a one. And then he went and came down in column nine and eight and saw there's only you know, one place left for one right here. And then he had marked that five, so he knew that had to be a five. So he solved those. And then he looked up in block three. And was like, hey, where can the fives go here? Uh, so he saw that this five came up and this five came across. So he made a mark of a five here and a five there. And then he notices that he can actually solve um, some fives after he made these two marks. So see if you can spot where Snyder solved the next five. Uh, pause the video while well, I give you a few seconds. Okay? Congratulations if you spot it. For those of you who just want to enjoy the show, he was able to solve the five in row four, column seven. So he had it marked with his marker. There's still a five right there, but he said, oh, that, that can be a five. And then he was able to solve the five right here. He was able to solve the five right here. And then he noticed uh, fives in row one and three that he could that he could solve this for a five. And then he went down quickly and was able to solve a five here in row seven, column four. Uh, this is where the speed and efficiency of the Snyder notation really came into play. Uh, he made all these solves really quick in just a few seconds. Uh, in comparison, in the video, you see Tammy next to him, and she's using this cross-hatching method of drawing like really long arrows uh, and then erasing them once she solves a cell. And so he, he was making small marks and he was able to book through this pretty quick. He was well ahead of the other two contestants at this point. And then from there, he started making some more Snyder notation. So he looked up in block two, in row one, and he was able, and he marked a couple ones. And then sixes in block two, row three. You saw that these are sixes because this six cuts across. And then he went over here into block three, row two, and so he marked those as sixes. And I'm kind of giving you this so you can see, you know, where his mind, where his eyes were flowing. Every now and then he'd step back for a couple seconds and look to see where else he could solve. Uh, after that, he was able to solve a seven in row three, column eight. He knows that uh, the seven came across and that this had to be a seven. And then he marked this as a four, six naked pair. And then he marked sevens in block six. And then he found a one in row five. He kind of went over and saw this one and this one. He was able to solve the one right there. In row five, column three. Uh, and then he looked for an eight and he found it in row two, column three. As we solved this one, he was able to come up and solve that eight. And he was able to solve that one. Uh, and then he followed the eights down and he was able to solve this eight. Uh, and we realized too, like his marks were still there, but he would just erase them really quick and mark the next number. Um, then he went and he marked some ones up in block seven. So he was in this spot and he noticed, okay, ones go here. And then he noticed that the twos go here. And then he noticed that the sevens go here. So he made all those marks pretty quick. Uh, basically it's a one, two, seven naked triple. And then after making that, he noticed that uh, 
he like saw a seven and seven. And he's like, oh, I can actually solve a seven for up here. So he solved that for a seven. And then he solved a four for row three, column two. So that, that was a seven. There was a four mark there, so he made that a four. And then he was able to solve this for a two. Uh, after he saw that for a two, he marked in block two, he marked a one, four. And he could pair. He said, you know, he saw four and four, so he marked these as fours. And then he was able to mark and solve this as a two because it was the last spot uh, in row one. And then he started following the twos down. So we got a two down here in row seven. Column two. You saw this two, this two. So he kind of went twos, twos, two. Okay, this has to be a two. So he marked that two real quick. Uh, then a one in row nine, column two. So he saw that one and he saw that for seven. Uh, then he followed the sevens across and noticed that there's only one seven left in row nine. Okay. And then he marked some more sevens in block four, column one. All right, after he marked the sevens, Snyder was able to solve a seven right away. So pause the video and see if you can spot where Snyder placed his seven. Like he made these marks and then he quickly marked a seven. Okay. The easy way to see this is if you see there's a seven here and here, so it's locked in rows four and six. And then over here, four and six, it means that a seven has to be in row five here in block five. And you see this seven and this seven, there's only one spot left for a seven. So Snyder was able to mark that seven right there. If you saw that, congratulations, great job. So he marked a seven in row five, column five, and then he was able to mark a two in row eight, column five. So he finished off row eight. And then he followed the twos over here, mark two. He actually, yeah, marked the two right there. And he looked over. And after this two, he was able to mark a two right here. So he was able to do a two right here. And then he saw that there's only one place left for a two in block four. It was right here. And then this candidate had to be a six. After he solved that six, um, he was able to solve an eight in row six, column five, due to uh, eight right here. He marked uh, these as a point a pair of eights. And then he saw this and he marked this as an eight. And this is important because he marked these eights in a hurry and they're kind of like small smudges. Uh, this is going to haunt him later. Okay, and then in this area, he marked a six right here. And the reason being is that he saw that the four couldn't be in this spot. So he marked a six there and then he marked the four right here. He's still looking good at this point. And he was kind of speeding up. Um, he was getting pretty close to the end. And then he's marked a five in row four, column seven, right there. Uh, then a seven in row four, column one. Uh, a four in row six, column one. Then a six in row two, column seven. You saw this had to be a six. And then a four in row two, column nine. Uh, and then a seven in row six, column nine. So, you know, he, he solved a seven, a four, and a seven. And then a six here in row four, column nine. So then he looks for a few seconds and he starts putting down a, a four here in row one. column six. So he saw that four and he put that one in row one, column five, and then a one in row seven, column six. So that has a one. And then an eight 
he saw this had to be an eight here in row nine, column six, and then an eight in row seven, column eight. So you saw the eight carry that out, and so this had to be an eight. And then an eight in row five, column seven, you put the eight there, and it was this position with six cells remaining that Snyder made his mistake and he lost the National Sudoku Championship. At this point, he put a six right here in row five, column eight. When there's already a six in block six in row four, column nine. So pause the video and spot what number should have gone in row five, column eight. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spot it. You could have taken down a national and world Sudoku champion. Uh, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's a four. A four goes right there, right? That's the only thing not in the block. Okay, so he marked a six here. And he finishes with a four down here. And then a s No, I'm sorry. He put the four here. And then he put a 6 in row 9, column 7. So he put a 6 here. And then he put a 6 in row 7, column 5. So he marked this as a 6. Uh, then he marked 6 in row 3, column 3. Excuse me. A 6 in row 3, column 6. And then he marked an 8 in row 3, column 4. And... He looked at the puzzle for a brief second, then he raised his hand, and he walked off in a time of about 4 minutes and 30 seconds. At that point, he thought he'd won the championship. The other players were still working on their puzzles. It was only later that he discovered that his solution was incorrect. Uh, looking at his blog after the event, Snyder said that he confused his Snyder notation marks right here. Um, as there are actually eight, he thought they were sixes which is why he marked another six in the block. So Tammy McLeod finished three minutes behind Snyder with the correct solution, and she won the championship and a spot on the U.S. team. Eugene Varshavsky, he could only fill in three cells in that time, and was later accused of cheating his way into the finals. So, how did you do in the pause the video moments? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Smart Hobby so you don't miss any new content. In the meantime, please check out these other videos from my channel. Thank you so much for watching.